The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews took up stones again to stone Jesus, and he replied, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these are you going to stone me? The Jews answered, It is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you, though only a human being, are making yourself God. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? If those to whom the word of God came were called gods, and the scripture cannot be annulled, can you say that the one whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world is blaspheming because I said, I am God's son? If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, Believe the works, so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. And they tried to arrest him again, but he escaped from their hands. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 53, we hear Isaiah proclaiming the marks of the suffering servant. He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. This powerful text from the Old Testament provides the foundation for the theme of our midweek services during Lent, By His Wounds We Are Healed. For us on this Ash Wednesday, we claim the marks of the suffering servant as the marks that Jesus bore for us. What is it that wounds and bruises our Lord? It's those things that we do because of our sinful nature, our transgressions, our iniquities, our punishments. All of these things that we do, Jesus bears and takes unto himself. And amazingly, what Jesus gives us in return makes us whole. And by his taking these sins upon himself, we are healed. Today and in the weeks to follow, we will reflect on the Ten Commandments as a reminder of our sinful nature and our Lord's wounds on account of those things that we do. While the commandments, the laws of Moses, expose the truth of our sinfulness, we will also be reminded of the promise of the Gospel that our Lord, in the midst of all of this, constantly abides with us. So let's start with the first and second commandments. You shall have no other gods before me, and you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Whom or what do we name God? Luther once defined it in this way. A God is the term for that to which we are to look for all good, and in which we are to find refuge in all need. Which God do we look to and find refuge in? Is it wealth? Is it power? Is it prestige? In possessions? In personal honor? Do we find refuge in our own accomplishments? In our wisdom? And in our knowledge? Sometimes we do. But we know that these are not the gods that we should bow down to. And none of us can say in these will we find all good and find refuge in our time of need. And the second commandment, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, has all but left our consciousness, hasn't it? The name of the Lord our God has been reduced to three letters. O-M-G. How many times have you seen that in print on social media? 
in movies, everywhere. The name of the Lord our God has been taken in vain so many times, each and every day, that that name has nearly lost its significance in our society. And because we, along with the rest of our society, has diminished that name by casting it off as just another thing to say, we hurt the heart of God. Our sinfulness leads us to this point. But our Lord Jesus takes all of these wounds unto himself by becoming one with us. His works of healing and life are the very presence of God in this world. In this mission, Jesus claimed total unity with God at the center of life and purpose. He said, the Father and I are one. And to his critics, as we heard in the Gospel of John, this was blasphemy. They saw him only as a man, perhaps as a teacher, perhaps as a prophet at best. But they did not behold him as one equal to God. And they asked, how can he take the name of God unto himself? Now the name Jesus means Yahweh saves or God saves. And Jesus in his life, death and resurrection, bore that name to the fullest of its meaning. In the person of Jesus, salvation was brought to this world. Jesus claimed us as brothers and sisters with him for God's sake. That is a claim none of us can make, but Jesus can and does for our sake. Jesus embraces the wounds of criticism that were lashed against him by claiming his own identity in the name of God. He takes that name and identity because his Father has sent him to this world, this poor, broken world, to fulfill God's loving purpose for the sake of redeeming all of us who are lost in our sins. Jesus is that promising presence of God in our lives. Think about it. In Romans, we hear that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Do you hold that as true? Nothing can get between us and God's love because Jesus is always present with us. And because Jesus was wounded for our transgressions, we are made whole so that in our wholeness we might go out and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. The patron saint of Ireland, St. Patrick, used as the opening words of his breastplate, I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There was a hymn that was attached along to that quote from his breastplate, that he and the monks, as they were going through the, out the villages in Ireland, would speak and sing to the people because every day they lived in constant fear of their lives. They were bringing a new message that Jesus came to die for us, that all of our sins are heaped upon Jesus and by Him taking all of our sins, we are healed. This song becomes a song for us today as we claim the name of Jesus. It has already begun with the ashes that we've placed on our foreheads. These words remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. Remind us of our transgressions, of our human frailty, of our need for a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ. By his wounds, we are healed.